As you go from Iyanokpaja to Egbeda in Alimosho, which is at the principal metropolitan city of Lagos State, Raji Oba is to your left. It is one of the most popular streets in the area. It is the street that holds the most imposing complex of Bishop David Oedekos of Winners Chapel, close to Moshalashi bus stop that leads to the street. It is a street that you cannot just miss. If Nigeria was not under military rule in the 1970s, Jimo Ishola could have contested and won an elected political position. She was just coming back from the market when she saw Ejik Badero and his boys. There was a woman in their midst. She was shocked to see the chairman. They have just heard in the village that his wife had just delivered a baby and that morning was the naming ceremony. She was wondering what type of man would leave his baby naming ceremony to come to the village. Oh, baby Pada, I don't go too far. It is just that there's a way I narrate my story in such a way that even if you have heard it before, I will still catch your glorious, nice attention. However, in the 1970s, when this true life story began, there was no Raji Oba Street. What happened that fateful day in 1975 shocked the entire Lagos state to its brim. Every nook and crane felt it. To tell you the story of Raji Oba, I must tell you the story of Ejik Badero, Kiniu Baba Muradeun, Lion of Mushi, Jimo Ishola, Adeyemi, Ejik Badero, Badero, the chairman. Jimo Ishola was arguably one of the most popular people in Lagos State in the 1960s and 1970s. He was rich, he was street wise, he was known, he was connected, wealthy, and has affluence. He was one of the darling of musicians of the day. One of the surest ways to launch a musical career then was to sing about a Jigbadero. Yusuf Olatinji, aka Baba Legba, devoted a substantial part of his volume 19 to sing his praises. Baba Commander Ebenezer Obe and his entire reformers band celebrated him in his 1974 album. Though Ejigbadero was not born in Lagos State, he became an official Lord Mayor of Lagos Metropolis. Jimo Ishola hailed from Ojaba quarters in Ibadan. He came with his uncle to Lagos as a young man to learn a vocation. On his arrival to Lagos, he quickly graduated from an apprentice to a company owner. Nail manufacturing was, however, not only Ishola's vocation. Over years, he knew Baba Muradeu had acquired a reputation as a dealer in land properties. He bought land, he sold houses. If you needed someone to protect your landed interest, Ejik Badero was your man. If someone forcefully took over your land, land a big battle husband was your best bet. If your own interest was to take over someone else's land, Baba Gani was the person you need to see. Ejik Badero was known to the police. He was familiar to the judges as a perennial litigant. And one curious thing about his court appearance is that he's never a plenty. He was always the defendant. He was popular with the lawyers. At a point, he was reputed to know criminal code more than some lawyers. He used to advise lawyers as well. That is to show how frequently he's running into land cases in the court. In 1975, Ejik Badero went with his boys to clear a land in Ali Moshe village. The land was full of cocoa and kolano trees. Remember I told you that Ali Moshe was a village in 1970s. The land we're talking about is not just one plot of land or two plots of land. It was a vast area of land where the villagers saw their economic trees going down. They challenged Jimo Ishola and his boys. The Lord Mayor informed the villager that he has purchased the land in the 1970s. Purchased the land? Which land? From who? How much? Who witnessed the transaction? Who collected the money? These and more were the questions the villagers were throwing at Ejik Baduro, who was calmly leaning on his walking stick. The villagers refused to allow A.G. and his boys to continue their work on the land. The villagers shouted at the retreating figures, We don't win, we don't win. You think you can just come and take our land like that? Never, never. Some of them were, however, not shouting. They knew that the retreat of Ejik Badero was not a surrender. They knew that he would be back. The villagers knew that they must act fast. At that time, the nearest police to them was at Agege. They went to Agege police station to make a report of a malicious damage of property against Ejik Badero. As they were writing their statement, the chairman himself appeared with the boys. He had come to lodge a report of trespass against the villagers who entered his property without his permission. The police officers were, however, confused. They attempted a broker of peaceful settlement. No way. A Jigbadero wanted his land. The villagers wanted their land. Who then was the owner of the land? Raji Oba was one of the villagers who was brave and he was vocal. He was not afraid of Ejik Badero and he told him to his face. Even when Ejik Badero threatened to kill him, the threat was not just anything. He said, and that was his retort. He confidently said that only Calabar should be smashed with foot. No one dared to drop a plate. Boys were cutting down cocoa trees with ruthless determination. Konano trees were not even spared at well. Raji Oba fled up. A big fight erupted. A Jigbadero stood like a rock. 
he was commanding his boys to give it to the villagers, just like an army general. In all, Ejigbadero saw a chance at Raji Oba as he moved closer to him. In a moment, he stabbed him. Raji did not even see the dagger. He felt blood flowing from his eyebrow. It was clear that Jimo Ishola was attempting and aiming for his eyes. Mokuo! The villagers heard the agony of his voice, which is the voice of their leader. He rushed to his aid. They took him to the hospital and from there they went to the police station. They made a report of a criminal assault and attempted murder against Ishola. Police promised diligent investigation, but it appeared to the villagers that the police at Agege belonged to the Lion of Moshi. Back to his base in Moshi, Ejigbadero was not happy. Ramata, Ejigbadero's wife, had just put to bed. Shoshalite knew what to expect. It was going to be a grand occasion. It was going to be an assemblage of Lagos who is who. It was going to be a party of the century. And it was on a Friday. Thank God it's a Friday. True expectation. Ejigbadero did not even spare any expenses for the naming ceremony. Food was in excess. Wine replaced water. Musicians were competing themselves on bandstand. The blind requested to be led to the occasion. The lame crawled. Ejigbadero and his four wives were dressed in a manner befitting a king and his olori. They were a spectacle to behold. Sabitu Oba, which was Raji Oba's wife, as she was coming back from the market, she saw Ejigbadero and his boys. A woman was in their midst. She was shocked to see the chairman. They have just heard in the village that his wife had just delivered a baby, and that day was their naming ceremony. She was wondering what type of man would leave his baby naming ceremony to come to the village. Sabitu quickly ran home and informed his husband the presence of the chairman in the village. It was already at dusk and the moon had just appeared. It wouldn't be nice for Raji to be roaming the village in such a time when Ejigbadero was around. She met with her husband. She ever with a sigh of relief. Hmm. She informed her husband that Ejigbadero was in the village. Raji Oba was also surprised. He had just heard that Ejigbadero was holding a lavish party at Mushin that day. So what was he doing in the village? And what has he come to do at the village at these stops? She had just finished speaking with her husband when she had an explosion. Go up! Raji Oba had just fell from his seat with a toy. Sabitu jumped in alarm. The wounded man began to groan in pain. Blood was oozing from the air. Sabitu turned to the direction where the sound of the explosion came from. Smoke from gunpowder was just drifting up in the sky like a moonlight. She had saw seven people running towards the nearby bush. She distinctly recognized Ejigbadero. He was wearing a short sleeve shirt trouser. He was holding a gun. Sabitu shouted at the retreating figures. Ejigbadero Morieo! Ara Abule Ejigbadero Tikpami Loko! Back in Moshi, the naming ceremony was in full swing. Ejigbadero was moving from table to table, exchanging battles with friends and well wishers. Remember, I told you that Ejigbadero was well connected with the societies. His guests at that night included magistrates, lawyers, police officers, and leading journalists of the day. Camera balls were flashing at Ejigbadero and his guests. It was a party that Mushi will remember for a long time. On the evening of August 22, 1975, the police officers on duty heard a crowd from a distance. Ali Mosho people have come again. What has happened again? Ejigbadero Tikparajio. Ejigbadero defense was straightforward. He was in motion on August 22. He did not step out of his house. He had witness who were eminent people in the society. He called Bashiru Ajakwe, a police officer, Jacob Oyelaki, a manager with Levensis Motors, and Emmanuel George, which is a lawyer. They all testified that they were at Baba Ghani's naming ceremony that day. The court considered the evidence of this eminent personality and found each of them to be, to be miserably untruthful in the evidence they gave. In the end, the judge found that Mr. Ilori approving the case for prosecution beyond reasonable doubt. Jimo Ishola was found guilty on two counts, conspiracy to murder and murder. He was sentenced to death. As the trial judge, my Lord Justice Ishola Oluwa, pronounced the sentence of death on him, Ejigbadero turned to his counsel in Nibado with an Nibado accent, asking, a meaning we? What was the judge saying? In 1979, four years after the gruesome murder of Raji Oba, Jimo Ishola, aka Ejigbadero, aka Chairman, aka Kiniu Baba Muradeu, paid the supreme price. What a price to pay for a piece of land. Remember, I said an African man can kill his fellow black man because of a plot of land. And he won't build or do anything on that land till he also dies. History added that Ejigbadero, the chairman, murdered Raji Oba on his child naming ceremony. What a smart move. But sometimes, no matter how smart you are, nemesis will still catch up.